guys, today we're going to be managing a patient's airway with a superglottic airway device. Today we will be using the eye gel. So starting off, I'm going to arrive on scene and ensure my scene is safe. Is my scene safe? Scene is safe. All right, then I'm going to make sure I have the proper PPE. So I have my gloves, my mask, and for full PPE, uh, while manage, managing an airway, we would have our eye protection and our gown as well. Um, so once I have that, I'm going to walk on scene and um, walk up to the patient and check for responsiveness. Hey, hey, are you okay? No response. There's no response to the verbal, so I'm going to try to administer painful stimuli using the sternal rub. Still no response. No response to that. My patient's unresponsive, so I'm going to palpate a, um, a carotid pulse for no longer than 10 seconds. And you feel a weak pulse. Okay, I feel a weak pulse, so I'm going to consider um, requesting backup right now. And then I'm going to do a head tilt chin lift. I'm going to listen and feel for uh, breathing while watching for chest rise and fall. You do not feel or see any breathing. Okay, so I'm going to look in the patient's airway, see if it's clear. You, you see vomit in the mouth. Okay, I see some vomit in the mouth, so I'm going to set up my suction device to clear the airway. So I'm going to take the can canister and one of the tubes, and I'm going to connect it. This one says it goes to the vacuum. So this would actually connect to the physical electronic vacuum if we had one or the manual. And then the second tubing is going to go where this one says patient. And then the other end of that will go to the yank hour. And then I'm going to ensure that all these other holes are covered because if any of these are open, I will not have the proper pressure to make a vacuum. It's not gonna stand up. <laughs> Then I'm going to turn the device on and check it on my glove. If my finger is covering this hole right here, suction is in process. If it's not, then I'm not suctioning. So I'm gonna test it on my gloved hand to see if it works. You do feel suction power. Perfect, so I feel suction power. So I'm going to open the patient's airway with my uh, middle finger and my thumb utilizing the scissor technique. My middle finger will sit on the patient's top teeth, my thumb on the patient's bottom teeth. I'm going to push the patient's mouth open without suctioning on my way in, so my finger is far from the suction hole. I'm going to go in as far as I can see, and then I'm going to cover the hole in suction in a spiral circular motion on the way out for no longer than 15 seconds. The airway's clear. All right, once the patient's airway's clear, I want to open it and keep it open with an OPA. So I'm gonna take the OPA and measure it respectively. So I want this piece to sit on the patient's teeth and then this to hold the tongue. So we're gonna measure from about the earlobe to the top of the teeth. Obviously this one is too large, so I'm going to try another one. This one looks a little bit tall as well. Let's see if I have one that is a better fit. That one looks like our best bet. So then once again, I'm going to open the patient's mouth with my scissor technique. The OPA, I want to sit like this in the patient's airway, but to insert it, I'm gonna turn it backwards. So the tip right here is facing me. And I'm gonna insert it until I meet resistance. And then once I do, I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees so it sits on my patient's teeth. Okay, is there a gag reflex or does the patient accept? Patient accepts. Okay, if there was a gag reflex, I would have to utilize the NPA. All right, so I'm going to start ventilating the patient. Um, I'm going to hook up my BVM to oxygen at 15 liters per minute. And then I'm going to place this on the patient's face using the CE grip. So my C is pushing down, the E is lifting up. Um, the oxygen connects right here. And then I'm going to ventilate one breath over one second every five to six seconds. I'm going to apply a pulse ox to the patient's finger to see if breathing is improving via how easy it is to like push the air and how the pulse ox is doing. Um, pulse ox is not improving and you start to feel resistance while ventilating. Okay, at this time I'm gonna ask my partner to take over ventilations for me while I prepare the superglottic device, the eye gel. Okay. My patient weighs roughly 110 pounds, so if you do the trick and divide by two, that's about 55 kilograms. The eye gel is measured in kilograms by weight, so the three, the size three goes for 30 to 60 kilograms. So this is the perfect size. So once I have this open, I'm going to prepare the lubricant and I'm going to hold the yellow piece 
and remove the eye gel, trying to keep this as sterile as possible. I'm going to apply lubricant to this divot right here. And I'm going to lubricate the colored part, so in this case it's the green part, all the way around. And then when I'm ready with the eye gel, I'll ask my partner to remove the OPA, just straight away. And then I'm going to use the scissor technique and open the airway, and then I'm going to insert it until I feel resistance. And I wanna make sure it's on the bite block. So the bite block is this hard plastic, about goes far beyond the patient's teeth right now. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the bite line, but on the hard plastic. So once that's inserted, I'm going to apply the color metric device, which measures the CO2 output. So we want gold is good. If the patient produces CO2, the device will turn gold. So I'm going to apply that. And I'm going to start ventilating again at 15 liters per minute of oxygen connect to this and one breath over one second every five to six seconds. Um, to make sure that my placement's correct, I'm gonna start by using my stethoscope or having my partner use their stethoscope to oscillate for um, epigastric sounds. If I have gastric sounds, that means there's air in the stomach and I need to remove it and replace it. However, do we have gastric sounds? No epigastric sounds. No epigastric sounds. So then I'm gonna check for lung sounds um, and I'm gonna look for chest rise and fall. Um, then moving up, I'm going to look at the color metric device, see if it turns gold. I wanna see if there's any condensation in the tube, meaning our ventilations are effective. Um, I wanna watch to see if the skin color starts to improve over time. And then the last thing I wanna check is to see if the pulse ox is improving. If all of those are good, then I want to secure the tube with tape. So I'll ask my partner to continue ventilating for me while I take a piece of tape. I'm going to have one side longer than the other and have it be as close to the patient's teeth as possible to limit movement. And then I'm going to pull taut and secure it down on my patient's cheeks. Not with it sticking, like that. Okay, good job Kimberly.